Okay, I'm Justin Chinyanta. I'm an investment banker. I'm based in Johannesburg, but my investment bank is headquartered in Mauritius and it focuses on you in Africa. Actually, you know, I'll be very honest with you. For us, we always prefer what we call the pre-emerging markets rather than the emerging or the emerged. And I say that because as far as I'm concerned, everybody looks at Africa as one monolith, but in fact it isn't. It has three different markets with three different approaches. The pre-emerging market has completely different approaches and it is characterized by states which are either in severe conflict or just post-conflict or just um, emerging from a, a perspective of um, reconstruction, etc. The emerging market is composed of states which have had some relative stability but still have some problems. And then, of course, the emerged markets is mainly South Africa, you know. Um, so um, we hardly do any work in South Africa, but we do most of our work in what you would call the difficult markets, the DRCs, the um, Angolas, etc. Uh, historically, that's where we've <coughs> seen the most dividend. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, what mm. do you see as a sort of a, a driving or enabling factors mm. for increasing investment in those areas? Well, first of all, to start with, it's um, the, the internal country policies first. And um, it's very important that um, in the new um, era of what is called the new partnership for Africa's development post 2002, Africans be seen to be taking more of a responsibility by themselves. So the countries that are by and large succeeding are those which have taken a very serious perspective in terms of this is where we are, this is where we were, this is where we are, this is where we want to be. I'll give you an example of Rwanda. In 1998, we were called by the central bank governor to look at one of the banks there which was failing. Um, we went in, I put in a team of three of my guys, restructured that bank, privatized it, had um, an international institution uh, from Kenya which bought it and um, you know it's now working solidly as one of the banks in Rwanda. But during that time of 1998 and today, you know, it's almost like black and white. Rwanda has moved from a perspective of where it was almost the shame of Africa to a perspective of where it raised $400 million from the international capital markets, um, but the bond was way oversubscribed about 10 times. So it tells you that um, you know, with the right policies, the right leadership, the right structures, and a very clear-cut agenda of not just aid for aid's sake, but aid with a view to exiting aid, a country will get back onto its feet. So what can, what can Europe do in, this, in that relationship? What Europe should do and ought to be doing is first of all start with drawing up whatever thought processes it has and see them from a perspective of all these thought processes as being intermediate, that they will at some point have an exit. Um, unless you start off from that perspective of, you know, how will we help these countries to exit? Um, the complete donor perspective, you are only perpetuating a situation which has um, gone on and which is going on at the moment. Um, I see that as no different, frankly, from, um, from uh, the perspective of, um, you know, countries which, um, you know, have, uh, have sort of taken on Chinese aid, for instance, as, uh, at the moment. You know, the countries that are succeeding in how they are shaping that Chinese aid and the Chinese cooperation are those countries which have a predetermined agenda of how they are going to use that aid to move them to a different perspective. But yet there are also other countries who are taking that aid and simply taking it on and on and on and it's adding to their total debt stock. Um, so, and, and then of course then you have some neutral observers who are saying, oh, poor, uh, the poor Africans being exploited by Chinese. But, you know, in fact, it's not the case. The smart guys know exactly what they're doing.